again that a woman, okay, was in some sexual thing with another person, okay, I do not believe in cancel culture one bit whatsoever, okay, but I do 100% believe in holding accountable, okay, how do you believe that you're going to be able to stop that, you know, that emotion, that emotional outburst on Facebook, those things, everybody in the community sees it, not only that, but once you're, if you are elected as a council member, Stanley talks, everyone talks, I've been noticing that, it's, North Dakota's real tight knit, everybody knows each other, especially in the sales world, you know, everybody seems to know each other. How are you going to stop people from talking about Surrey when those things are going on and talking about you and you can't control yourself? There is no real good answer for your question. Because every answer I tell you, or everything I try to say, somebody is going to turn that around and use it against me because it's not the right answer. Because it's not the answer that you're looking for. You have a predetermined answer that you want. You've already decided what that answer is. So it doesn't matter what I say or how I act or how I do anything. You've already determined that for me. That's what Facebook is all about. It's what it does. It's what social media does to everything. Social media will destroy relationships. It will destroy cities. It will destroy all kinds of things. Because you can't see the emotion in the writing. And when you only saw a screenshot, part of a conversation from an event that happened 10 years ago, well, maybe not 10, in that time, several years ago, what answer would you like me to say? I was emotional about the situation. I am emotional about it. I still have family in Stanley. There is a nightmare of things going on over there. People ask me about it all the time because I was part of it when it started. What answer would you like? No emotion? Not say anything? Not defend the people that need to be defended? My goal would actually be to stand up and defend the people that need to be defended. So the same thing would go on here. If there's a situation here, a group of people that feel like they're getting run over, why not stand up for them? Why not put myself in front of them? If somebody wants to attack me, that's fine. I'm okay with it. Attack me. I'll talk to you about it. I'll talk to you about it all day long. My phone rings, I'll talk to you. Come see me in person. One thing about that whole situation is not one person asked me my personal feelings on it. Nobody asked me any questions on it. Nobody asked me anything. You took what somebody else said and made a whole big issue out of it without asking me anything about it. It's kind of unfair in reality. The person making the if it's, and if it's about the drama, okay, what do we do about drama? I always tell people that drama, one person's drama is another person's reality. So just because it's drama to you, doesn't mean somebody's not living through it right now. There are people struggling because of it. And you call it drama, but it's their daily re reality. It's hard. And if you want to, if you, if anybody wants to base anybody's opinion off of a fake book post, and yes, I call it fake book because it is, it's a joke. I use it as entertainment most of the time. You can research people on it, and you can learn so much about people just by putting things out there and seeing what their reaction to you is. If you look back at some of the posts and you see what, how they reacted to me and how they treated me, what's that say about them at the same time, right? If you want to hold them accountable, hold me accountable for my actions, should we not also be holding the other people accountable for their actions and the way they talk? Especially when it's a situation that we don't know about. 
that, I guess that's kind of the answer to it. I don't have a, to me it's a, there's no way to eliminate the drama when other people are always going to make drama. No matter what you do, there's going to be drama. It's just the way it is. This may come as a surprise to some of you, but there is an entire population of people that are, there's a larger population of people that don't pay attention to Facebook than there are that do pay attention to Facebook. Um, I know that's hard to understand, but there's lots of people who don't belong to Surrey Uncensored. Sorry, Tara. I know. Um, and there's lots of people who read right past those comments that are meant to be inflammatory or taken out of context and take it exactly the wrong way. So to get to your question of stopping the drama, that starts again, in my judgment, at the table. There should be seven people sitting at that table representing their constituents, which is either Ward 1, Ward 2, or the entire city. And everything that's done up there, it's hard sitting up there. I've been there. Sometimes you get, a cho you get to have to choose between a bad choice and a worse choice, and you have to make a decision, and you have to move forward and move on and get past it. And again, I think everyone here, whether you watch Facebook or not, everyone is just weary of it all. We're weary of the name calling, we're weary of the drama, we're weary of the yelling and backstabbing and undermining the process. And in order to stop undermining the process, there's this wonderful thing called the Surrey City Ordinances in the North Dakota Century Code. And they're there for everyone to read and the people who sit behind that table take an oath to follow it. There was a point at which I was part of an open meetings violation. It wasn't intentional. I honestly didn't know we were violating. As soon as I, as soon as I figured it out, I brought it to the mayor, the city attorney, brought it to the council meeting the next time we were there. It got sent to the secretary of state, got us in the newspaper, it was embarrassing, and it was, I, I took part in that, and I owned up to it. And now I'm going to hold the seven people behind that table accountable for following those same rules. And that should be the mission of every person who lives here to hold their government accountable. They should be taking part in this process. And again, they're scared of it because of the drama. They're scared to put their name out there, to get put into the sites of, of the Facebook attacks or the personal attacks or the phone calls to people's bosses. That has to stop, and it has to be a commitment made by the seven people behind that table. And they need to stand in unison, whether they like each other or not, to get back to the business of the city. And that's how the drama will stop. Oh, no, no, hang on, wait, 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 wait. Hang on, Jimmy. I have a question, because we were talking about Facebook. <coughs> Guilty. However, what I want to know is, if you're elected to council, and I pretty much know your position, I'm not sure about yours, Aiden. One thing that drives me nuts, and it's my opinion, is for council members or city employees to comment on the drama page, which is Surrey Uncensored, um, about city business. If you're elected, do you promise to keep it off of Facebook, the city business? Okay, so Tara's question for the people at home is, um, and this is again from the moderator of the Surrey Uncensored Facebook page, if, if elected, would I commit to not posting anything on social media at all, you're talking all, at all, about city business? Um, and I don't believe I, I generally don't when I served, it wasn't something I did, simply because I was always trying to get people to start showing up at meetings and participating. It's kind of a joke. It used to be that we might have one person sitting in front of us at a meeting and pretty soon we had a whole city hall full. And it wasn't for the reasons that I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be full again because it used to be full of Boy Scout troops earning their civics badge. It used to be full of people who were coming to learn or to bring issues there so we could take them to, say, the park board and have a, have a working relationship with the park board so we can all work toward the same goal. And, and, and I think if it's posting about stuff like that, absolutely. 
When I lived in St. Louis, Missouri, I used to help with a organization in the municipality in which I live, and it was called U City in Bloom. And I talked to some people about this a couple of years ago, about wanting to put together a group of volunteers citywide to start public gardens, flower gardens, citywide. And we had something come up with some planters that went down Pleasant Avenue, and it got blown completely out of proportion. But what, it, what I learned on that Facebook post is there is an army of people, an army who would love to do something like that, who would love to volunteer an hour a week, three hours a week, an hour a month, to beautify this city. And that is the sort of thing that our council should be doing instead of pointing fingers and showing drama at the table. So yeah, I, I can't say that I wouldn't post about city business because there's a lot of constructive things that can happen as well. Well, personally, I uh, don't have an issue with me. First off, there's a rule against it. And if I'm going to run on a theory that we have to follow rules to change things, that'd be the first thing. It's just a rule. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> also on that, I just, and you kind of touched on that, that post. I started that post. That was me. Oh, I didn't even know I did. <laughs> that was me that brought it up. And uh, it was brought up to me by people that had questions about it. And the people said they didn't dare ask. They were afraid to ask the questions because they felt they were being attacked if they asked. And I said, well, if that's how you feel, let's find out if you're right. And I don't know how many, how many people in this room read the post. I did. Oh, I did. I Anybody notice the fact that people wanted to help? Yep. There was people that wanted to help, right? Okay. Those same people are scared to pose or ask questions now because if they do, they're going to get attacked. And that's how they feel. And if you don't believe that, take some of them aside and ask them personally. They'll tell you that. And that's it's a sad thing, and that's what happens. But there are, there's a great group of people in this community that would love to help. It doesn't matter how long they've lived here. No, no, I mean, my, our neighbors just moved in within a year, and they, they didn't want to help anything, you know? That's, that's what we are, we're a community, we want to help. We want to make our city a little bit, we want to do things. But we also want to know what's going on. Um, I, I think. I think that answers the question. I mean, absolutely, I, I'm not going to fool. I hate Facebook. I hate it. I can't stand that thing. It drives me nuts. Like I said, social media is just insane. The only reason I have it is to do research and to find out where I'm racing next because if you don't have Facebook, you can't find out what racetracks are running this weekend because hardly anybody uses a website. So that, that's what the other reason I do it. There are times to use it, like part of the cycle. There's definitely things that we can use it for. There's positive things we can use it for. Uh, we should probably, it, it definitely should be updated more often for the city so that we can actually get that communication out about what's going on, what events are happening, do we need some volunteers, are there some, is there an event that needs to be happening, goes on? Somebody brought up about painting, repainting the horse on the sign coming in. Several people volunteer right away. Let's get them together and see if we can get some people together and get that done in a day or two. I mean, it'd be great. So, I think it's, I think it's beneficial also.
I think the only reason why I decided to try to um, try to get my name thrown into the hat um, after the uh, last minute kind of thing was I keep I keep telling my kids about when you watch change, you need to be the person to sometimes you need to be the person that wants to step up and take the make the change yourself. And very frankly, I just want our town to be back to what it was 11 years ago when we moved here. Um, I thought it was very nice. We had a lot of fun things to do for the community. We weren't, it seemed like we were on the news for negative things all the time. Um, and um, I just, I just want to help get us back to being good and we have great people here. We have a great community and I think we've let too much drama and personal things get into the way of business to move our city forward. And that's just, that's where my goal Could you tell everybody what ward you're running for, please? Oh, ready for ward one. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? We have. Oh, yep. Okay. I gotta walk around.
on the last one. <laughs> the, um, the minute I saw that post, I looked at my calendar and my family's going to be out of town that weekend. <laughs> but I mean, if there's something I can do outside of that weekend, because I showed up at that car show. I happened upon it last year. I wasn't, we had something going on, happened upon it, and had a wonderful time. I ended up there for three and a half hours. I think. My son had 14 posts on his Instagram of cool cars and tires and stuff. It's a great event. And I hope that people listening tonight will volunteer. But I think there's a, number one, the drama that's been spoken of and, and all of this, this side or that side has definitely affected from top to bottom this community. It's affected the park or the church. It's affected every, it's affected how homes. This has been a, this has been something that has literally been almost a sickness within our town. And there's all sorts of blame going around. He started it, she started it, they did this, they did that. And none of that is helping. Not one bit of it. Um, I think to get more volunteers to, to help with the park board events, to get more volunteers to help with city beautification or Surrey and Bloom, if you will, or whatever it may be, starts with all of us taking a great big deep breath and then letting it out and saying, let's just move forward. Let's, let's move forward with people that maybe we didn't like yesterday or maybe we still don't like, but we're gonna do it anyway because we need it. And right now, Surrey just needs to do it anyway. And I think that's how we can come together. And it, there's always gonna be little small, there's always gonna be a little drama, but I think, I think we can get take care of it pretty quickly if we just make a, a collective decision to just actually put put the rubber to the road and pick up the pick up Facebook or the phone and get a hold of somebody and see if you can volunteer an hour and a half of your time for the car show and bring your grandkids and your kids because it's a great event and, and, and have a good time because we're more likely to have more of those great events in town if we have a successful one. And the park board is busting their rear ends to put the stuff on. And as all as you have to do is show up and volunteer every once in a while so that they don't have to work so hard. I've dealt with volunteers for several years in different aspects. Getting people to actually volunteer is super hard if you want. We're having a hard time getting people to work for the money. Let alone come do something for free. It's hard. It's very hard right now. My suggestion to you would to be disassociate yourself with the city council before you ask for volunteers. Disassociate yourself from the city. Don't don't let the drama into your volunteer group. If you if you cut a line and you stop, don't don't allow it. And then go look for the people in this community who do want to help. They'll show up if this isn't allowed. But if this is going to be part of it, they're not, they don't want to be part of it. They want to be part of a good, growing community, and that's what people are asking for. So the way to do that is to allow that to happen. The event is great. As far as how to get more people, to get more involved, we got to reach out to some car clubs. I don't know how many cars we had last year. I, I, Yeah. Great show. I, I know I've heard about it. Fortunately, my car goes in a circle, and we were out of town that weekend. So, and again this year, technically I'm supposed to be out of town that weekend. We're not so sure yet. We might, you know, I might just bring my hot rod and throw it on the street and let some people wander around and look at it. I guess I'm not, I'm not understanding what you're talking about. This the city council. We're not involved. The people who are volunteering because it's kind of divided by two. I'm not saying anything that people are talking about. He said and she said group A versus group B. And sometimes one group shows up to help us out and the other group doesn't. So all of a sudden we're just automatically associated with those people. That's not what we're all about. We just want anyone to come help us. I don't care if you got three eyes and two heads. Come help us out. But people don't want to do that if they say, hey, so-and-so is helping them out. They're with that stuff. 
That's not how it is. Right. And, that, and that's exactly what I mean. It's those, that situation is what we need to avoid somehow. We have to find a way to avoid that situation. And it's very hard to do. It is. And that, and that is the, that is the association I mean. Avoid those people. Don't Maybe don't allow either group. Don't allow any of them to help. Go for a whole other group of people to help. But well, then we got nobody. Then that, that means the rest of the community really needs to step up and the people that are saying they will help really need to show up and help because that's what we need. We need that. We need that as everybody in the community needs to help out. We need to be able to go around and talk to our neighbors, have our neighbors help do things. That's, that's what we need. I grew up in a town, but that's what we did. You know, I grew up rural, more rural, so I, we all helped each other. We all did whatever we needed to do to get things done. And I believe that's, I, I still believe that now it's just a lot tougher. Sorry. Yeah. Um, anybody else have a question? We've got three great candidates up there. No questions for them? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Residents that have been here for a long time. 
And I think if we could bridge that gap by eliminating some of the drama, then I think we'd get some new people from town to help volunteer for these events. And, and I don't know how to say that without it sounding really bad. And I apologize if it does sound bad, but it just, it, it seems like sometimes there's a, there's that divide also. Does that help? of leadership on council, um, my question to all three of you is we have had some leadership issues with council and what are you going to do to make sure the meetings stay on track, to make sure the audience doesn't over participate, to make sure that everything continues to move instead of beating dead horses? 
what are each one of you, what are you willing to do to put a stop to that, to shorten the meetings, to get to the point? What are you willing to do in order to stop that or to get that moving? Um, one thing that's been talked about at the recent meetings, um, and I try to make every one if I can, um, and I encourage people to do the same, whether it's going to be a boring meeting or not, um, is to prepare for the meetings. The packets are given out ahead of time, and often you are spoken to by constituents about issues that are coming up. Um, so preparing for the meeting and be ready to talk about it. If there needs to be a committee, that should be that the committee should be chosen at the beginning of the month and help foster those meetings and foster community involvement. And I think that's another important thing. All these committees that are coming up need to include citizens that aren't currently sitting on the council to help move things forward as an additional voice of the people. Um, the there is aside from just general rules and Roberts rules of order, our city has a leadership code that was accepted by the council and it has become a bone of contention because it's not a it's not a, a, an official document. I don't think being a good leader needs to be an official document, but apparently it does in our town. And if it's that document, the people are asking us to be good leaders, to be respectful of each other, whether we like them or not, and to be res respectful of the citizens as well. And all of that I'll do my very best to follow that and continue to follow it like I've done in the past. And I'll also do my very best to encourage the other people to do it. Um, I think that um, leading a meeting is hard. I've done that before too. And I try, even from the chairs, to respect those rules when the people within the chairs are also respected for their, for their input as well. So I'll continue to do my very best to, to make sure those meetings move along. Thank you. Will the egg timer help? <laughs> oh, yes. Nice loud ding at the end of two minutes. Right. And then your time to speak is done. That will help it out a bunch. I believe that is what the rule is in, in the ordinance. I'd have to look to make sure. I'm, I'm for the audience or for the council member? Both. Oh. Okay. There is a time limit. Yeah. There's a time limit for speaking, and there's a time the amount of times you can speak on the same subject. Right. I believe it's twice on the same subject, and I think you can be redirected once maybe. So it's not exactly clear. I have to study it really. I have to actually really sit down and study it to know, and I haven't done that. But that's how that's how you do it. You know? Mike, I'm sorry. I'm going to interrupt you because what I'm trying to get at is I understand what our ordinances and everything say. What I want to know is if the meeting is going off track, what will you do to get it back on track? And I hate putting you guys on the hot seat like this, and I mean no disrespect to the leadership. I'm just saying that's something, I mean, how can you be on council and keep things moving at a, a decent rate so they're not there until nine or 10, and us as taxpayers aren't paying all that money for them to sit there and hash things out and hash things out for silly things. That's, I guess, what I'm asking is quite, that's what the question is. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it, it's a very tough question because, you know, in my, my opinion, as a council member, you don't run the meeting. I don't run the meeting from my chair. The meeting is run from another chair. So that question should be answered by the person that runs the meeting. Um, you could watch a couple, you could go on YouTube and watch some local other town meetings and see who runs the meeting and how things are handled. I'm not going to sit here and point fingers. That's not what I'm trying to do. I don't want people to think that, but I'm stating that if you want the meeting to run along, you want things to be taken care of. You follow those rules, and the person that runs the meeting needs to run the meeting. Thank you.
showing respect to the, that everybody that's there, but also kindly reminding them that, you know, we've been here for this amount of time, we do need to move on. And, uh, but again, it, I think it's just showing respect for whether it's the citizens or any of the other council members that are speaking that, you know, just, you know, to politely let them know that we've got to round this up and not not being rude and disrespectful about it. I think that's where I would, would be standing if anybody else was we were still talking and if it was I don't know exactly I guess it's a good answer. Thank you.
And I think that anyone who's committed can get that done as long as they have the know-how on how to do it. Um, so, you know, I mean, I think this is going to take all of us. It's going to take all of us to make it better. And it's going to take us sometimes when somebody comes up to me and says, want to hear something? It's for me to say, you know what? No, I don't. Thanks anyway. And then go about my business and volunteer in the car show.
Um, they can pretty much be in any sport that they want. Um, we, we, we have a great park board that has done a lot of things with bringing new parks into um, Surrey. We, um, it is important to say that, but I think the biggest thing is to take away the drama. Don't be, I think, we shouldn't have a complainer's page or, like, I know that Minot has, like, their whiner and their whiners and complainers page or whatever. Like, it's good to be honest, but if it's not something that's going to be good, if, if it's, um, if it, if you don't have good intentions when you're posting something, you should post it. Um, I think that's not just city council members. Um, I think that's just us as a community. We need to stop being really tough behind our phones and our keyboards and stop bashing ourselves is what I think is going to help bring Surrey back to where it should be and where it was. Any other questions? I don't want to miss anybody. There you go. <coughs> like I'm doing all the work. Question. If you want to leave the mic there, Shelby. <coughs> We're in this predicament now because we had two council members walk off because they couldn't do it anymore. <coughs> That's what real. Pardon me? Oh, you really want me on the microphone? All right. Normally, I, people tell me to shut up, so all right. <laughs> okay, here's my question. We are in this situation right now because two council members couldn't take it and walked away. And I'm saying that as harsh as I can say it because that's the truth. Um, what I want to know, in particular for you, Tiffany and Aiden, because you haven't done this before, 
you've seen what's out there, and I hope whoever gets elected, I hope you're given the respect that you've earned through the election, <coughs> and just as people. But I want to know, can you stick it out? Can you handle it if it gets hot? If you've watched, if, if, I, if you haven't yet, I encourage you to go on the series <coughs> YouTube's page, the City of Surrey's, and watch some of these past meetings. And are you going to be able to do it? This is for all three of you. <laughs> well, I get to go first. question it's really good how are we going to do it? how do we know that we can do it it's basically kind of what we're and then we go deadly because of the situation um, first off that situation should stop before we even get there it should have already stopped mm -hmm. it should have happened in the first place but now we are here can I stand up to it well lady over there probably answer that question better than I can. Um, the little one or the big one? I, I mean, she knows what I've been through. Um, people don't all know what I've been through, things I've been through. Uh, some of this is nothing compared to some of the stuff I've had to go through and stuff. So, nobody can say yes to this answer. Because nobody knows what somebody's going to do. Nobody knows what somebody else is capable of doing to you or saying to you. I'm very capable of anything, but if you threaten my family, right. I am going to get mad, I am going to say things, and I am going to get upset because I come first. So, like Brian said earlier, Brian, right? like Brian said earlier, how I control myself for that um, really good up to that point. So if the same thing happens, if it becomes not worth it anymore, how can we say that, that we won't, that we will always set it up? We can't, but it should never get to that point. Right. This is a position where we should be paying some bills monthly, making sure things are running smooth, and just taking care of some city business. I don't understand personally how there can be so much emotion behind the table about stuff that isn't even emotional. It's just a conflict. It should happen. It should not happen. So that needs to stop. That stops. We're good. Good answer. Thank you. Usually when I commit to something, I'm pretty dedicated. 
know anything about me and my family, um, or my brother, or uh, never gave up on him. You know, I think he's a very hard-headed child to go to school. Um, like, trained dogs also, and those um, have not given up on anything that, um, that I put my mind to and wanted to, so I don't. Sounds good. Thank you. Were you active? Were you active military? Or not Thank you. Thank you for your service. Uh, the question was whether do I think I can handle the pressure at the table. The answer is yes. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Was there a yes? No? Yes? If not? I, I've actually got something I'd like to say. Yeah, I was gonna I mean, I'll hold I mean, I, I'll end it with one more. Go ahead. Kind of the other. I don't need a microphone. No, the people who are listening. Oh, yeah. The people who are listening. Oh, yeah. The people who are listening. Oh, yeah. We're streaming. We're doing something. We're about to turn down the computer. Uh, so, a major thing that I, you know, when I hear, you know, you talking about the questions that I ask, a very important thing that you said people have a set mindset when you ask a question you want an answer. Okay, well, in sales, I don't believe it. Because if I walked into every single place and accepted their answer, well, then I wouldn't have a job. So that, that's, that I, I personally don't believe that to be true. And you know, in my years of training people in sales and, and leading in that, I don't believe that to be true. Okay? So a major thing that, that I've seen in this, you know, when you ask the question, how are you going to do that, one key thing that, you know, in my mind, I did have one key thing that I was looking for, and that's, who are we going to see out of all the people up at that stage up there over at the council? Who's going to cross the line? Because everybody in here, or at least everybody that's been following it, I've only been following it for probably, I don't know, four or five months now. I've, I've been able to piece together who was on each side. It's very obvious. You know, we're trying to hide it that we're not very good at it. Okay? But the major thing is who's going to cross it? I've seen in one of the, one of the meetings um, that was really surprising to me because my biggest thing coming into this is I've kind of involved in politics. I like a certain side in the big world politics. And you know the biggest thing is who's gonna cross. And, and and that's a really important thing because are they crossing because of you know one key thing you want to get votes? Or is it what is the reasoning for crossing? Okay? But small government is I hope that it would be cross for logic, especially in a situation like this. It's something I seen I believe Steve Fenewald was a really big shocker when he cross. It was like it's constantly going back and forth and all of a sudden he voted in something that was very logical to get the city moving forward to get some votes cleaned up because personally I was pretty upset when I seen that I'm, you know, I'm a renter and I'm like, okay, well, I have to pay a deposit. And I'm like, well, automatically I thought, well, it's my owner of the property paying a deposit, me, so on and so forth. Something was weird with that. He crossed the line to make sure, okay, the citizens are obviously when this struck up. I mean, even the lawyer at the point said, everyone needs to shut up or I recommend you shut up. Um, what was a key thing there? Uh, what are you guys going to do to cross the line? How do we know? What are you, how are you going to persuade us? Because that's the biggest thing here. It's persuasion. You know, how are you going to you know, back up what you say and persuade us that you're going to cross the line and make sure you're doing it for the right reasons? Okay, because that's, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for you guys to cross the line. If you see the other, the A or a B team over there helping them, when are you going to step up and cross the goal or with them? Because the biggest thing as leaders is to step away from the other guys and go with everybody else and, and show and lead and do the right thing. Okay, and then the other key thing that I wanted to point out here or ask, okay, I don't, you know, following, like I said, four or five months of trying to get into it. You two, I don't necessarily know if you have too much background or, you know, baggage, I guess, in the Surrey area. You, know, you said that you ran a few times. I know hearing a lot of the different people in the community, their key thing was, I just wish everybody would just resign yeah. and we could get a clean slate. You obviously have the rough situation here is because it, we're really truly a citizen speaking up to what we say. We want a clean slate. How are you going to overcome that objection? Uh, truly making this a clean slate across the board. And that's, I think, what a lot of people want. And then also, obviously, you know, I don't necessarily know your guys' baggage. Obviously, Stanley's pretty close. I heard it from some of the random people that I know over there. You know, what is your way to overcome that? You just actually asked the question on the statement I wanted to make 
before you ask the question. Um, the, the answer to that is, what you may not know is, uh, and it might surprise you, one of my friends is, sits on that board, who I've often butted heads with, who it would totally blow you away if you knew that I think he's a pretty decent person, I just disagree with him at the table sometimes. And that doesn't play well on the gossip now. It doesn't play well that Brent Dickinson and I have a working relationship or a working respect for one another. It doesn't play well across the bar or across the coffee table because it's so much better and juicier when there's conflict there. And the conflict that people keep talking about is produced by that. It is fed by that. And, and what do I do to cross the table? You can go, you've been for five months. I, when I originally got involved in, in government in the city of Surrey, it wasn't because I asked to be, it was because they needed somebody to step up to the plate. I didn't know what I was doing. And I've made some good choices and I've made some bad choices and hopefully you learn from the bad choices and again, you pick up and you move on. And the, anything that I've done, to my recollection, I've been following an oath that I took real seriously to uphold the Constitution of the United States, the North Dakota Century Code, and the ordinances of the city of Sur. And again, that may not play well in certain circumstances, but those rules are very clear. And sometimes you have to move forward with decisions that aren't popular and that make it easy for people to villainize someone. And that's okay, because I signed up for it, because I think it's that important to have somebody as in a strong leadership position. And there should be seven strong leaders out there. And strong leaders should be able to cross the line all the time, because every decision in front of them needs to come new. It can't be based on anything. And it needs to be based on not what my personal beliefs are or what my best friends, four best friends' personal beliefs are. It needs to be what's best for all of the citizens of the city because there are about 1,300 of them that just want this to go away. Mm -hmm. And that's what I can be part of, is just making it go away because I know how that city council used to run when it ran well. I think you and I have hashed and stuff over 
on the fake book a little bit. And now one day he said something about, I pay, I pay about as much attention to some of this stuff as nothing. So don't, don't get me wrong. I think it was something about a vote for me would be a vote for Trump. I think it's roughly how it was going. And I said, no vote for me would be a vote for common sense behind the table. And I meant that. And I still mean that. Because I don't care about A. I don't care about B. I care a lot about C. And that's a group of people that the voice needs to be heard. I care a lot about that group. Um, it's common sense sometimes. I don't need to be on this side or that side. I need to hear the facts. I need to know what the facts are so I can make a decision based on those facts. Not from here. The drama can stay somewhere else. I don't need it. That part of it, the feelings of some of this stuff, can stay somewhere else. I'm not part of it. I want the facts so we can make an informed decision based on what we need to do to move forward. If we're moving forward, if we're fixing something, we need the facts and how to fix it. That's what I would, how I would do it. As far as being the leader to cross the line, I don't know. Um, I don't want to be part of either line. I just want to be me. I make, I make my own decisions. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. And sometimes I say things that yeah, maybe you're going to get me in trouble down the road, but you know what? Sometimes I need to be said. And you, sometimes a good leader needs to be harsh, and he needs to stand up and say things. And that's just the way it is. Um, I, I don't really want to bring up the stuff that you said about Stanley and leaving that stuff over there, because I really have. You have to fully understand that I am not. I'm part of that because of the situation I was in several years ago. I have some dear friends that I have worked hand in hand with, that we have saved lives together, that we have worked in the emergency room hand in hand, that right now can't say anything about what's going on because of that situation. So sometimes I do get a little hopeful about it, I do get a little bit emotional about it, because I don't like to see my friends treated that way. I made a point of that the other day. Another thing I said is, we all should be concerned about it too. Because the same ambulance service that's now having to, having to run out to Stanley and pick up patients because they can't fix their mess, is the same service that we may need here. So they're running short staff in my end because of the situation 60 miles away. So if I can help that over there, in reality, that's helping us here. I hope that helps. Yes. That was my brother, though. We're mistaken a lot. I did the campaign, but we campaign full speed. A lot of people missed that. <laughs> that was all. Dog and everything. Yeah, I apologize. Again. Like I said, that's how much I pay attention to. It. <laughs> I use it as an experiment sometimes, like I totally use it to see who who's going to be against me and who's going to be for me because I don't know everybody around here. So if you put out a post and somebody attacks you, you know the people that are going to attack you on everything you say. If somebody stands behind you, you know the people that are going to stand behind you. It's really easy to see. Just like that A and B line, you can just go right down the post and you can see where they think I fall. But I don't. I, like I said, I don't. I don't care what line. You know. Are there any other questions? We're going to wrap this up. I just have a sure. sure.
maybe I better go back to mine and put a dollar me out here. But I like this town. This is a very, very good town, and I've always had good vibes from up from way back. I never got involved. For one thing, a lot of it was lack of information that comes out of our way for the new people. I don't know if you guys have a, like a welcoming club or a welcome wagon or something to know what's going on in your town because I've always lived in a big town. But um, one thing I've noticed here is I'm very active in the communities all over. People know me around. And um, I like being involved. I like to volunteer for stuff. I like, I am a volunteer coordinator myself. And, um, but one thing I noticed is when I went to the town meeting, I was so upset for the way it was handled that I thought, you know what? I'm breaking this town up, but there's nothing to brag about because there's too much garbage going on. And I'm not going to be in this garbage. I'm going to go back and mind my own business and do my own thing. And when things settle down, I'll get back involved. So I'm hoping that our new people that are elected um, will turn this all around and make this a proud city that I was proud of to come to stay here and to live in this town and be proud to bring my grandkids here and everybody here. Because I know a lot of people in this town and um, you guys are great citizens. But we do need to get back on the right track. We do need to get the right people on our committee, on our council and we need to move forward and forget the past because we could sit here all night and say this said that, that said that, said that. But what boils down to, when we get our new people up on the council, whoever gets elected, they're the ones that are just gonna move forward. They're not gonna look backwards. They're gonna move forward and make this a great place again. And then I'm gonna be very happy to walk in that door and say, I want to help. I want to be a part of you guys. I, even though I haven't been here for years. And so one thing I gotta say, if some of my guys still back here, don't don't take this personally. But when I first moved in here, you wouldn't believe the speeding tickets I got. <laughs> I must have been a blonde left-handed Norwegian, because I'll tell you what, whoop <laughs> done. Finally I got it right. <laughs>
Um, it's going to be there on that same link that I put on, Surrey Uncensored and Surrey Censored. Um, let me see. Oh, well, I want to thank KMOT, but they left. It's great that we're going to get some positive um, coverage out there. And remember to vote. It doesn't matter who you vote for. What matters is if you don't vote. This is your control. This is it here. You need to get out there, you need to talk to your neighbors, you need to talk to your friends, tell them what you heard tonight. Give them your impressions. Have them watch the videos so they can listen to the candidates. And then make sure you vote. The problem is we don't want to have 39 people voting. This is a community. We're making it better right now just by you guys showing up for this tonight. And I want to thank everybody for coming here tonight. Now we are going to hear, oh, and I really want to thank Tiffany because I kind of threw her up here, and she wasn't quite expecting it. She had obligations tonight. But she did come, she did speak, wasn't ready, and she did fabulous. And Aiden and uh, Carla, you guys are awesome. Thanks for all your honest answers. Now we're going to have some closing. We also have cookies from Kaylet's that I hope everybody eats or takes home and lemonade, help yourselves. And uh, I'll be posting soon, um, whenever Brenda tells me. Um, we're going to uh, beat the park for it. <laughs> and hopefully we'll do this every month. Thank you all again. We're going to have some closing arguments here. Are you? Are you so Huh? I'm sorry.
And I hope you vote for me, but even if you don't, go out and vote. June 20th. July. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Carla. <coughs> Um, I just want to thank everybody for coming out tonight, everybody at home that's watching, that's watching. Uh, hope so. Uh, hope everybody got some good information tonight. Uh, I'm a pretty private person, but it doesn't seem like it, so a lot of people don't know anything about me, and people like to assume things. So I'm glad that I got to come out tonight and actually get to talk in front of people and show people who I really am. Um, I want to comment on something that Lois said over there. And just real quick about the welcoming thing. And I grew up in an era when we had the newspaper and we read every week what was happening. And I think we miss that now. I think people really miss that because we don't know what is actually happening around. And that's a big problem we have. And I would like to see that change somehow. I can knock on the social media site of some kind because all it does is the news is important. Being able to comment on the news is not that good. It's important to know what's going on, but not necessarily to be able to comment on it. Because then I'm going to comment on it, and I'm going to ask my That's what's going to happen. Yes, I do. Um, I want to thank these guys for coming. Um, and I don't know if there's any real truth to you guys right in, not right in. If it is real, if it is real, I don't know what you guys really have to say. I want to thank you guys for coming. I really want to thank you for coming and asking me some questions, smart questions. I hope I answered them the way you wanted them answered or expected them to be answered, maybe. Um, it's great to see you, and hopefully we meet, hang out, whatever, around town. And I want to get on and thank everybody. Thank and, oh, I definitely want to thank this lady right here for putting this on. Everybody, please give her a round of applause. So that is in the works, so that's a positive thing too. Um, let's just keep thinking positive, pushing the city forward in a positive direction. And um, hope to see you guys in the next meeting. Remember, July 20th.